Hello, this will be a video tutorial series of how to rig a robot character in Maya. So we're going to take this in parts, but this first video we're going to discuss how to properly set up the model for uh, rigging and then discuss how to create a skeletal system. Then we'll discuss how to set up the skin weights of how the geometry moves with the joints and then we will go into creating custom controls and then finally we'll talk about how to animate this character. So this first intro video we have uh, a robot model in here. This is going to be a demo on a bipedal humanoid robot that has two arms, two legs, some fingers, uh, neck, and some torso twist on top of the pelvis. So overall this will be a bipedal robot uh, rigging tutorial series. The first thing to note is that everything is individual parts. If we need sub-object motion for something like a character, everything that needs to move independently needs to have an individual object with its own kind of pivot point. So that way when we get to the skinning part of rigging, uh, this body part can be skinned to a head joint, for example. Um, so anything that needs to move independently needs to be a separate object. We're not going to combine anything or boolean anything together. The second thing is we're going to name everything. So before we go through anything else with the rigging process, we need to make sure we have an individual name for every object. I like to use indicators. So if it's the left side of the body, this left shoulder, then I'm going to use a capital L underscore shoulder ball, capital L underscore pointer, um, all the way down to the uh, fingers and the, the foot area. So I have capital L for the left side, I have capital R for the right side, and then other areas uh, like the head and the torso and antenna, those are on the central axis, so I don't need to add any other indicators. It doesn't really matter how you name things as long as you understand what they are, but a good naming convention can make your job as a rigging, uh, into rigging and into animation more successful and easier for organization. But I'm going to keep everything as independent objects. Uh, at the end of the project, I'm going to show you a more complex uh, body setup. Uh, so I have some secret objects over here that I'm going to come back to and we'll talk about how to address those. But for right now, we have a basic model. The last thing to do is this is going to be a robotic model. So it needs to animate in a believable, realistic way. Um, I have used, or I'm creating simple ball joints for everything. So for every major joint, I either have just a twist area or this ball that's going to kind of rotate in kind of a socket. So we want something to appear believable. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100% realistic, but I do want to create the body parts so they look like they would actually be able to move in those particular ways. So ball and socket joints are a simple, easy way to approach robot rigging. We can also then go to hinge, um, joints, bolts, and nuts, and things like that. But a simple ball and socket joint will work for our occasion. Because this is a stylized robot, but we still want it to appear believable. After you have modeled the entire character, uh, there is probably some history on different objects. So one thing that is important is to go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. Okay, so history can cause issues whenever we are running through these secondary stages, secondary steps of rigging. Uh, so we're going to select all of our individual objects and go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. That's really important. We want to make sure there's no history that can be causing any issues in our later steps. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is that I just have some basic materials on these objects. So if I open up my Hypershade, I just have basic Fong materials on here. So I've not UV mapped this. Uh, I may do that later, but the goal of this demo is to show how to rig. So I just wanted some basic color differentiation from the joints to the body parts uh, to uh, to show what parts are what that's, that are moving. So I just have some basic flat uh, colored fong materials on these objects. All right, so now we're ready to start creating the skeletal system. So to wrap up this video, uh, actually one more thing before we get to that point is I have my arms and my torso in a, what's called a T-pose, right? So the arms are straight with the shoulders, the fingers are straight, and that's gonna make it easier uh, for us to rig the character with the joints and the controls. So it's always better to model the character in a T-pose. Uh, if it's a bipedal character, definitely a T-pose. Where the arms are straight with the torso and the fingers are flat straight as well. 
The final thing with the body parts, we're going to create what's called an inverse kinematic control for the legs so that we can create stepping, walking, pushing off of a surface with the legs. And from a side view, if I go to a side view here, turn on my, sh my shaded view, I need to have a forward bend in the leg. So the legs cannot be completely straight. The legs need to have a forward bend. So as in my knee needs to be in front of in the Z axis, in front of the hip and the ankle. If we don't have a forward bend in the knee, we can't create that inverse kinematic properly. So from the modeling standpoint, I'm going to position my legs so that I have a forward bend. I also have this set up so the character is facing the Z axis. So if I go to the, the front view, I'm looking from a Z direction or Z axis direction and the character should be facing the Z axis. So if I go over to the side view, I should be looking at the character from the side point of view. All right, so those things kind of couple with deleting the history and making sure we have kind of plausible geometry and organization when naming will allow us to be able to start the rig properly. So to wrap up this video, in the next video we're going to come back and talk about how to create the skeletal joints um, for the body.